She is a senior ML researcher engineer in the industry. She is a published author and seasoned open source AI leader with over six years experience in ML research and development. Her areas of interest include generative models, NLP, and human AI interactions. She was also a two-time startup founder, a blockchain educator and researcher, founder of Women Who Code Data Science, and technical advisor to various startups and diversity and inclusion consultants for tech nonprofits. She completed her degree in mathematics at the University of Waterloo and currently lives and works out of her truck. Interesting. Maddie enjoys piloting airplanes and adventures in the wild in her spare time. Please welcome Madeline Shen. I took a snapshot of my LinkedIn profile. Um, like previously mentioned, I'm mostly an AI research engineer and I focus a lot on open source. Um, one of my claims of fame is that I founded Little Code Data Science, which currently has 4,000 global members, uh, all learning AI and machine learning and data science together. Um, so, yeah, a little bit more technical details. My title is a senior machine learning engineer in the industry. This talk was not cleared by my company but they do the activity that generates revenue with a lot of force. And I have a 100% reference success rate, as in they get an offer after that, because I do not work with people until, uh, unless they're awesome, I don't recommend them unless they're awesome, and uh, I don't get them in front of people until they're ready. And generally, I try to build cool things. So at this point, you know, Maddie's probably very proud of me. She's like, yeah, you know, Bray and Komati. And you're probably like, okay, Maddie says beautiful places, remote places, that doesn't always have very good connection or Wi-Fi. And uh, I typically try and live off what the land and the water provides, right? So I'm going to go into a part of this presentation that's more like a show and tell. I'll show you a bunch of photos, give you a little bit of background about what was going on there, and if you have specific, you know, questions about photos, we can go back to it. Um, and then this is a photo of the timber from my belt. Prior to this, I had barely used a electric drill, so th this was like major success. And then you may be thinking you're looking at a tiny house, but that's actually a mobile chicken coop. So if you have a house that you can move around, the chicken can scratch the soil, fertilize it, and also always find fresh food to eat. It's really good for them, really good for soil. But I'm very jealous of the chicken because I'm like, I could live in a tiny house, you know? <laughs> and this is me learning how to weld, and that was me fixing my truck. Um, word of advice, don't fix your truck unless you know exactly what you're doing. Otherwise, you may end up stranded if you live out of it and you work from it. Um, this is me kind of uh, working on a piece of deer skin that uh, hunters have donated. They took the meat, but they didn't want to keep the skin. So I'm basically processing it and then brain tanning it. Every animal has enough brain matter to tan its own skin. So the process is you work the brain into the, into the skin after you shave it. And then uh, you also have to smoke it to kind of set the tan, right? So that's kind of the process here. And with the leftover that we didn't tan, I made a uh, traditional drum, right? So these are all the cool things that, you know, we kind of have to do uh, if you're just bumming around. And just like with machine learning, I taught it to myself, I succeeded, and then I try to teach it to other people. It helps me uh, know my skill more and helps me improve communication. And with things I learned in the wilderness, I like to teach it to other people too. So this is a bunch of kids learning how to survive in the woods if they were lost. And uh, so I think they're building a lean-to here. One little guy was particularly comfortable right there. And this young man caught his first bunny in a snare, right? I assure you, he's actually very happy and very excited. <laughs> yeah, it's just that that day was negative 44 degree outside. So if you look very closely, he has like, you know, icicles on his eyelids. That's why he doesn't look as excited. So now let me share a couple of things I learned in machine learning that helped me adventure better. And these are not super technical. I think you can all maybe apply these principles in your life. So the next thing is the idea that's particularly important in uh, reinforcement learning, which DMI is you know, all uh, very good at. It's about uh, explore versus exploit and the danger of overfitting. So I'll show you what that means in a graph. What these machine learning models are trying to do is trying to get the highest reward by climbing a hill, right? Sometimes if you start a model in the wrong place, you will end up on a baby hill, and then you can get to the highest hill, right? So what does that mean for the rest of us? Um, sometimes it helps to try, try things you know, a little bit around and try different things first. And the way I say that's kind of data set. And you just remember that data set, but it doesn't kind of apply to the rest of the things, right? So what does that mean in my case? 
Well, I'm very comfortable in front of the computer, slaying code switching models, doing machine learning, but I also want to be comfortable when I don't have a computer, when there's no power, when there's not even any fuel, right? So this is why I spend a lot of time in nature and improving those traditional skills, and it's fun for me. Yeah. So what now, right? All of this has led me to really want to double down on machine learning. I'm supposed to be focused on, uh, you know, human and machine learning interaction and conservation, right? Applying machine learning to nature. And I want to build a wide ecosystem in terms of developer, in terms of and help, but also divided by the expected cost, and cost could be time, effort, uh, money, etc., and multiply the risk level. Right? So when you're trying to make decisions in life, what you should do, try to use this formula, because that means you do the smallest, least expensive test, but you get the most information out of it. And we all want to be making data and real life based, you know, real life information based decisions. Um, and then so what did the venture tell me about uh, machine learning? Well, things can and will go wrong. If you keep crossing on ice, you know, rivers and lakes, one day, just a matter of you know, probability and time, you're gonna get your toes wet, right? So I think it follows some kind of Poisson distribution. That would be my guess. Um, the, the next thing is, the best time for XYZ is a long time ago, and the second best time is now. So I wish I started doing this truck life thing, you know, 10 years ago, right? But I was scared, I'm like, I'm not a good driver, what if there are bears, what if the truck breaks down, what if I get fired? Um, none of that really happened, and I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to deal with that now, right? But how does this apply in machine learning? Sometimes I would get an idea, I would get a really cool hypothesis, and I'm like, oh, it seems like a lot of work, I don't think it's going to work out, so I don't actually do that exper uh, experiment or research. And then I see someone come out with like a similar paper or something very close and it points to like the hypothesis working. And then I'm like, oh, it's too late now, everyone's onto this hot thing, you know, I should have done it a long time ago. And then I remind myself, uh, yeah, like, you know, it would have been nice if you started like two years ago, but now is the second best time. So you try it anyways. And then productive procrastination. Well, very simply, when I get tired of reading machine learning papers or writing code, I go chop some wood. And when I'm tired from that, I go read papers. Uh, yeah, so what now, right? All of this has led me to really want to double down on machine learning. I'm supposedly focused on, uh, you know, human and machine learning interaction and conservation, right? Applying machine learning to nature. And I want to build thriving ecosystems in terms of developers, in terms of ML, but also in the wild. And if there's one last thing I want you to remember, the only thing I want you to remember from this, if there's one thing that is, you get to define who you are and you can change your mind anytime. So that's it.